Well, I'm back at the flight park. Oh, there's some potholes here. Oh, that. I have to be a little careful about going over some of these potholes. So I'm going to be back here for about two weeks. Then after that, I have to go back to my dad's until all of this, everything is over. Ah, this is really weird. Yeah. <laughs> Such an uneven road. I can hear stuff flying around in back. So they have internet up here, which is great. But if I park along here, this embankment, the cell signal is really bad for my phone. So I found that I have to do this. I have to come and park because it's better out here, but the wind tends to blow north to south. I'll have to see if I need to move for level, but yeah, I'm far enough off so I won't be in anyone's way. I forgot to lock that. Dang it. This handle keeps coming off. I'm going to have to get that put back on. Hey folks, Chris here. So I'm going to do a quick uh, vlog entry tonight, sort of Nomad RV uh, vlog entry tonight. So I discovered that I've got uh, three mice living with me up here on the flight park. So when I got up to the flight park, the weather has just been changing enough that we're now really into spring. And I think what's happened is that the mice have come out of their hibernation and found a way in. So I was the other night I was working in here and all of a sudden I catch something out of the corner of my eye and I look down and there's a mice, a, a mouse scampers from one corner to the other. And I was like, oh, crap. So during the evening, uh, you know, you can't just run over and catch them. So I just kind of paid attention and two more came from one corner. What I ended up doing was going uh, yesterday and getting some mouse traps, and I felt kind of bad about this, but I don't want them just hanging out in here, right? So I um, went to Home Depot, which is considered an essential business right now, and I got traditional mouse traps like this right here. Mouse trap. I was in the RV last night, and all of a sudden I look over and there's a little scurry across the floor. Ooh, look at that, that thing's huge. Kills mice. It's gonna be kind of brutal, but I may have to do it. Uh, they they had a couple of other types. They had the types that were like the sticky kind, where the mouse just gets trapped on there, and I felt bad about that because at least with these types, they kind of it's just instant, right? Like they're dead instantly. You don't feel bad about it. It's kind of humane. So I planted four of them last night and I had just some cheese and crackers that I kind of put into the thing right there and the silly thing about this is that I've never had to set one of these before I've never had a problem with mice and I actually feel super silly I had to watch a video how to set this thing uh, it wasn't too difficult once you see it <laughs> but I set four of them and three of them had the food taken out of them during the course of the night good grief and over here, I had to set a trap, and that one went off. Actually, 
this is the amazing thing. That one went off, but they got the food out of it. That one didn't go off, and they got the food out of it. I had a little cracker wedged in the metal piece. <sighs> the sad part is I think I had three mice because they were scurrying around. I got that one. I know it's sad. I know it's sad. But having mice in an RV is not a good thing. So I got one of them. So there are probably two, and who knows, maybe others have moved in. But I could hear, I could hear them. Like I would be, I was working here and, and suddenly would hear some activity and looked over and there was a mouse running by. I woke up this morning, saw the dead mouse, took care of it. Put that right there. Oh, this is gonna be awful. Oh gosh. Okay, it's the next morning. And I got another one. Oh, that's sad. I actually had two traps there. But I put two traps next to each other and I put food sort of in between so that they would have to get in. And uh, that got them. This is gonna be your sort of burial chamber. It's a coffee cup. Now I gotta find the other one. Where'd the other one go? There were two traps there last night. There's the other mouse trap right there. It probably just snapped and it, they've got so much kinetic energy that it just snapped and flew over there when this mouse got got. So I think I've got one more mouse in the RV which I will try and get tonight. Well, it's the next morning. I waited another morning, <laughs> got another mouse. Well, little critter, there's your coffin. Oh, that's so gross. Blah. Now I gotta clean up. It's made quite a mess over there. I love this little thing. I'm on the flight park and I've been getting up and there are paragliders and parasailers out there, right? which is fun. So I went over and I just ended up talking to one of them, which is fun, just to go up and talk to strangers. And, and uh, he turned out to be a flight instructor for paragliding and parasailing. So I had a fun chat with him for a while. A few minutes ago, there were a lot more of them and I think most of the paragliders have just landed. Yeah, I mean, it seems like there's, pro well, Right. It seems safer to me just because you've got something a little bit more rigid to work work with than, yeah. the, than the paragliders. Paragliders are a little bit easier to, to learn but tougher to master. Are they? Because when, well, once you're flying in turbulent conditions, you see like the paragliders are starting to go away and we're going to start throwing these up more. Yeah, I was noticing um, that. It takes a little bit more work to keep them. Uh -huh. together right where the hang glider once you kind of it, it's a little tougher to learn they're a little bit more inconvenient as you can see yeah um, but once you know how to fly them it's pretty easy to kind of progress and, right you know, right they're not, they're not too much it seemed that when I was watching a few people launching with the paragliders they had to be really careful about holding it to get a catch wind but it looks like there were so many of the cables or the you know it, it definitely looks that way at first um, like how do you keep them from not being all intertwined yeah. Well, so the trick, as long as they're connected to those two points, unless you're intentionally like trying to make a knot out of them, right? They they'll, they'll they'll be organized. A lot of the times, the force of the wing and plating will straighten everything, so it's a lot right. less of an issue than you think it would be. Oh, okay, that's There's, interesting to know. Yeah. There definitely could be like if you let go of the thing and then throw it and then grab it again. Oh, it's like so a Rubik's cube. You get one thing wrapped around. Right. You know, it, how then many, you got to start many over. So <laughs> you Rubik's cube can you do before right. I start using it? Right. These, uh, the, the main concern is, you know, it's the same with paragliders, but. Up. With these, since it's a wing, um, yeah, I'm actually gonna lift this and turn it into the wing. Yeah. The way a wing works is. I mean, it's like a traditional wing, isn't it? I mean, it, it, is, yeah. the, it the air flows faster over the top and creates low pressure. Exactly. Yeah. Yep, yeah, so. they both are. So, just this wind moving is gonna be speed, right? Like, if we had the engine on, we're going whatever speed that wing's going. Correct. So, you can imagine if you put your wing up like that. Yeah. 
it's gonna go tumbling. So yeah, yeah. that's one of the first things we teach. That's kind of our, you know. And I guess that's why this is so ideal, is you get this wind for free here. Oh, absolutely. This is a, like a world-renowned site for this. Yeah. Because the conditions are pretty reliable, and yeah, that's fine. So a lot of learning how to fly is learning conditions and learning, you know, what's a good idea and what isn't. Right, totally. Yeah. Um, and you get an eye for it pretty quickly. Right. I've been trying to kind of keep myself occupied by during the day. So I've had some few projects in the RV that I've wanted to take care of, like fixing a door latch. Another project is the latch right here to my, to this cabinet door. So I use this cabinet door right here for laundry and just a bunch of miscellaneous things. And I've had to jury rig it with this right here. And this works okay, but this has been getting frayed. And so I've got to do one of two things. I've got to fix the actual original um, latching mechanism on the interior, or I've got to get a better uh, string or something like this. And this is the original screw. I had to go to Lowe's to find something comparable. And I've got this, which I think is going to be about right. So I need to make sure that this goes back on in the correct position. So I've got to put that back on like that. And then I've got a pen here. Okay, so I marked it. So it should be about like that. I really like this little IKEA tool set. <laughs> okay, so there are the screw heads. I had to drill a new hole, but I've got that in and it fits, I put some uh, wood glue in there and I've got to let that wood glue sit. Uh, it had cracked down the middle, so yesterday I put some wood glue in the cracks and I let that sit overnight. And then the wood glue that is in there binding this here, in addition to the bolts, I'm gonna let dry for a day before I close this. So for now, I'm just gonna close it with the old strap and string that I was using until this sets, but I did do a test and it does close now and fit. I may end up taking this one out because this one doesn't even sit, this one doesn't even close. So I may take that out and try and reset it, I don't know.